Right, I think I captured most of that last video. I think it did turn itself off. Um, it's too much for me to play back. It'll take uh, 20 minutes to play it all. So I think it did actually do quite well along. Because what, I, what happened a minute ago, I'd gone up Somerton Coombe and it forked. Instead of going straight across the stream, I, I, I went up a route that takes you up to Lower Heron Up, which I didn't want, so I backtracked, easily crossed the stream, and now I'm on this track, which is one, the one I wanted, because I hadn't done it, hadn't done that particular route for about seven years, and I hadn't done it that often, I forgot. But I didn't forget, something told me I should have crossed the stream. There's lots of streams to cross. Um, that one was alright, nothing too complicated. The ferns have died down. Now you can imagine coming up here just a month ago, or two weeks even, and it would have been difficult because of these ferns. This is where a stick comes in handy, by the way. This is a very ferny bit, this bit, but it clears in a minute. Because they're very high, the ferns, where the ticks hang out. So we are taking risks. We'll have to do a tick inspection later. Oh. I've just met two men. They weren't carrying anything. Nothing. I must be on a short walk. I never go anywhere without basic first aid kit, water or food, in case anything happens. I don't want to be without drink. Right now, look at that. Look at that everyone. Look at that. Ladies Edge right over there. Summerton Coombe carrying on up meeting Slaughterhouse Coombe. We could have done that way. But I wanted to do this way today. I wanted to, because what it was, I was going up a branch that's going down that way, beyond those trees. This is the way I had to come up. I knew it was near here. I did know that. I just, as I was going along, I thought I wasn't in the right route. But just to make sure, yeah, this is where I we're back on track now. And it's been interesting. I know we've had to make a few diversions. And there might have been a slight bit of anxiety in my voice. But that's what happens. And it's part of the excitement of exploring. Or going down tracks you haven't done for a while. Trying to remember. Now I, I can remember doing this track. The last time I did this track going down. The hunt were coming this way. And I had to get out of the way as a master of the hunt. <sighs> yeah. And his red gear and everything. I'm very anti-hunt, you see. Oh yeah, personally. And you do get people up here trying to put them off. I think he would have run me over if I hadn't got out of the way, by the way. But, uh, yeah. In fact, it wasn't long after that, I think my van was sabotaged, you know, because I had an old van. They probably thought I was a one of those anti-hunt protesters. Someone had done something to my exhaust. Yeah. I, I even, uh, I even recognise those hunts people when they're in normal clothes. Um... Higher hair naps up there, folks. We'll be going along the top there later. All right. At the moment, we're going. We're going to join up with the main route. We're going to have a slight diversion to try and get on track of the path I did um, a year ago on the seventh of October. We're obviously not doing anything like it today. The last part where I put a stone on the car and will be the important bit, really. But I, I wanted to do this way. It is a narrow track. 
takes you deep into the country of the hills. You feel like you're a part of them when you're in here. You know? You really feel like you're a part of the hills when you do little tracks like this. See? The gorse is dying now. The gorse and the heather. Heather's dying, the gorse is dying, ferns. I can hear somebody. There'll be people on different tracks, you can pick their voices up. And like I said, it's a rutting season, it's just started. So there's no hunt at the moment. Now I was walking with two of my grandchildren once out on a hill over there, very near here. We were walking, just walking along, and this deer suddenly sprung up out of nowhere. And he frightened the life out of Jay's. You asked one of my granddaughters. It just bounced out of the ferns. It was amazing. God, isn't this gorgeous, everyone? That's higher hair nap up there. On the 7th of October 2023, I stood up there on the con. I placed stones on the con. I'm totally unaware of the massacre happening in Israel at the time in Palestine. I went up there on a beautiful day like this. That's why I've come early this year. The last part of the walk that I do across the top there will be identical to the walk I did last year. But not this bit. I didn't do this bit, what I'm on now. I did um, a little bit later on. So... This was totally unplanned doing this one, by the way. I didn't plan to come this way. I had thought of doing it. I had thought of doing this route. I remember lying in bed thinking, shall I, shall I try Somerton Coombe and doing the little track for a change? You know, because I'm always doing Shepherd's Coombe, Hodder's Coombe. Um, you know. Right, I'm just going to turn off for a minute, otherwise this one packs up if I don't give it a break. I'm just going to give it a break a minute and just video. There's not a lot you can video at there. I can take some more pictures in a minute. So we follow this trail. There's a parallel route over there, which is Lower Hair Nap, like a line going along. That's Lower Hair Nap. Higher hair, hair naps on the top, you can't actually see that one. And of course they harvest the bracken, I can see where they've done some harvesting. They've been doing that over the past couple of years, doing a bit of harvesting. Um, and they bale it up, and of course it's fodder for the animals in the winter, because they keep cows out here all year round now. Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? I've got the sun from keeping me very warm. I've had to take my coat off. I just decided to put it inside the bag. It's okay, it fitted in. I haven't got a lot of stuff in there. I'm keeping my jumper on, because you get your arms scratched with the gorse being that close. I just love this place, you know. I know I say it over and over again. I just love it. I can't explain the feeling I get because I've been coming here since childhood. It's like a, it's like a home to me. My spirit was, even if my ashes aren't going to be put here, my spirit will be here. <sighs> Definitely. It'd be everywhere. My spirit is getting everywhere with that spirit. It's a very clever, it's a bit like Father Christmas, it gets everywhere. <sighs> oh, yesterday was a good day. I uh, went and had my second visit to see my great grandson. Held him and George Joni took some photos got a lovely one of me and him and she said mum you're not a, a nan a gran or a grandmother you're great 
you're Sheila Great or Great Sheila. Yeah, she said that's what we're going to call you because we've got Great Duncan. So he, want, he just wants to be called that and not Uncle. He wants to be called Great. So they said, well, could do it to your mum then. Call her Great Sheila. Well, Sheila the Great was even better. <laughs> but you've never had one of them in history. We've got a nice timeline in history though. So, yeah, we've got some very, very famous people in our tree back in time. From North, going from, say, St. Martin Stupfil back when we started getting grander and grander and grander. Then after Martin Stupfil, we started getting lower and lower and lower. <sighs> Survivors, though. Yeah, paying for the sins of the ancestors. Of course, people, a lot of people don't, they think it's all mumbo jumbo. But I mean, I've been doing the tree for 30 years, using all the resources that you're supposed to, all the research strings and processes that you have to use to verify your work, back up your work with, you know, they, people like to sit and write in and all that. So it's uh, because we're such good record keepers, that's what I say to people. England were such excellent record keepers. Well, even, mind you, you could say, right, they kept the record, but it could still be wrong. True. True. You've only got to get one person, and it's not really the child. And it's all up the cock, isn't it? So you really have to base it on something. And this is why now we've got the DNA... And the DNA does the verifying now. In fact, they've just said today that I think a thousand new babies, or, or all new babies, I don't know if they've done it to my great-grandson. Might have done. They're doing their full genome because they want to study different diseases and that. So um, they take the DNA from the placenta and uh, they do the full genome of the of the baby. So I'll have to ask my daughter, my granddaughter, if they, because they would have his blood group if they've done that. I would have thought they would have had his blood group anyway, to be quite honest. I bet they did. They would have known from the placenta what his blood group was, because she's B positive. So it depends what his dad was, I suppose, what he'd be. <sighs> yeah, I'll have to ask her. Uh, it's not all hospitals were participating. Seven different maternity hospitals were participating. So I wouldn't be surprised if Taunton wasn't, because, um, was, because uh, it's quite a, a famous little hospital, really, Taunton where I trained to be a nurse. I could have trained elsewhere, but I chose Taunton because I liked their syllabus that they were going to be doing. I liked their approach, their holistic approach. Really, yeah. I was really into holism. Well, I am anyway. I would have been a holistic person anyway because I'm, I'm a socialist. You know, so... That's all I am, a socialist. I don't mind saying it. I'm not a capitalist. I've given away all my worldly goods, nearly. Right, turning off for a little while. We're going round the bend. And we'll be coming out up there. There's a big path up there, so I can see a few people walking. But we're not going straight on the hair nap. Because there's lower hair nap there. We're not doing that yet. We're going to be heading over that way uh, to pick up a track which would have come from Crocom. Um, Crocom village where I came across fields. Fields full of mushrooms, by the way. Um, I was very, what I really wanted to do is just get down to that field again, see if there was any mushrooms there. But I don't know if I've um, already added too much time. What time is it now? Yeah, we got six hours before it's dark, so I haven't driven in the dark yet in that car. 
I had to get Joni to show me how the lights work because sometimes they're on automatic. Sometimes they're not. I said, will the full beam come on? I said, no. I don't know. Oh, oh we got a bit of um, high stuff to get through. Look. High thorns. Right, let's turn off for a bit, have a break.